This video is about the pancake coil. This is the standard version of a pancake coil. These two have the same ohms. This is smaller wire. This is larger wire. This is thicker and this is thinner. I will show you later that this one was very inefficient. This one was a thicker coil. It was very efficient. First of all, a free energy device essentially is taking power from a source and tapping into it. From our viewpoint it becomes free when the source is already provided such as the wind or water. Now if we could take and control this medium, make it as strong or weak as possible, uh, make them portable without any extra effort, and this would be nature's free energy machine. Now I come to the magnets, the Neo magnet. It's a tremendous powerful source, but it can be made weak or strong, but unlike wind or water, it's a static force. It's not flowing or changing, so it is very, very difficult to access its strength. But I will lay out some experiments and tests that show perhaps the pancake coil can take advantage of a very important feature. I have about two and a half inches here and uh, I'm putting six volts. The coil is about three ohms. And it pulls it down quickly. I'm going to next, I'll move to a commercial bought electromagnet. And we'll see what properties it has. It has the same ohms. This has a coil with the wires around an iron core produces a, uh, a magnet through electromagnetic means. Okay, we'll go ahead and set that up and I'll be right back. Before testing the device, I want to make sure that we both have the ohms for the electromagnet that's commercially bought. It's uh, about 3.7, 3.8 ohms. Okay, we'll go over. And the pancake coil. Okay. About 3.65 or somewhere in the same ballpark as the commercial bought. Okay, we could see the coil, or the pancake coil, could go several inches. We're going to fire up the commercial bot electromagnet. It has a coil also. It's down in the center and uh, it has a iron core. Tucked in there. about an inch or so where it starts to pull. Now an electromag has a tremendous strong contact magnetism. Very very strong. But we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. We'll put a 3 8 uh, washer there or spacer and we'll see what type of pressure it takes to actually lift it. I'm going to readjust the uh, video to make sure we're going to catch that scale. Okay, should be okay. And I think it'll be able to be enough. You can see uh, the pounds on it. Okay. Okay, we have a about a three eighths inch buffer washer there for a spacer and to lift that off there you can see that the scale of the spring scale is not even moving so it's very very it does not take very much to lift that off okay we'll go back and fire up the pancake 
coil. I'm using a uh, Neo magnet, very, very powerful magnets. You must be very careful with those. Okay. And put on our coil, hook it up, see which way we are. Okay, that's pulling, and just for experiment, we'll see what happens with it. It does have a lot of torque to it, a lot of power, attracting and repelling force. Okay, we'll hook it up. Go ahead and use our spacer on there. Create some spacer. Okay, we'll hook her up to attraction mode. Whoa! <laughs> Did that again, huh? Okay. Let's see if we can get that the correct way. Tore off the uh, there. There we go. Okay, that's a traction. Put our spacer in there. Just about lifts that coil up. It does. Very, very powerful contact. But where the advantage is, is the power which it has at a distance. That is because of the physical properties of this pancake coil. I do not understand it completely, but you can see that uh, that's, see if we can get that around there where you can see the markings. Uh, there's a thousand. If you remember on the uh, electromagnet when we had spacer, it didn't even bend the spring. There's a thousand. There's fifteen hundred. It's just starting to lift that off of there. About fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred gram. Whereas the Electromagnet. An electromagnet really is, that's what a motor is made up of. They have little electromagnets in there that they fire past a, a permanent magnet. And uh, so the problem is when you use neomagnets in motors, the force, the traction force, is so great that when you come by with your, your rotor and you'll have a drag on it. So the stronger the field in a motor, they do cause problems later on. But in this setup, the stronger the magnet, you have more output for the same input. Theoretically, I'd never have to change this input. Say you put 6, 10 watts in it. This is about 9, 10 watts. And if you theoretically had a infinitely strong magnet down here, the permanent field, then you could lift a thousand pounds up uh, by using the same uh, 10 watts, 9 or 10 watts. So theoretically you could do that. So we're changing the, the outside force just like uh, if you had water and you could control it anywhere you wanted, make it stronger. You could move your paddle wheel faster. Here you make your uh, field stronger using the same input, you make a stronger motor and this is good because you can have a long stroke it's still pulling even at a distance uh, let's go up that's a that's about almost a half inch there go up about an inch and it's still pulling down let's see what we're hitting even up in there we're still hitting there's about a thousand there's about 1500, about a thousand there. And so that gives you a good long piston stroke to make an engine. Uh, they've tried over the years to make uh, permanent magnet motors, uh, but uh, the problem was that uh, you don't have much pull until you're just so close. And then if you get so close with a strong magnet, then you're going to have drag. And uh, so with an electric ma magnet, it just, you don't have that. Uh, distance that you can operate with uh, because it doesn't have an iron core so there's no drag at all 
having no iron core, when the electricity is off, you have nothing. Put the electricity through, has a very powerful force, even at a distance, which is crucial for making a piston motor. We're going to go over and I'll show you one that I started developing. Okay. This is just a possible setup that I thought of. This is on a pivot or here. This allows the coil to up and down. I have a magnet here and then I had uh, another one up there and it actually increased the power a little bit. Uh, so anyhow, how it would work is that you could fire it. You can see that it has a lot of force there. I measured the gap here that it travels about, about an inch, just a little bit more over an inch. I'm going to reverse the polarity that pulls it down now. And then measure the force. I'm going to go ahead and reset the camera. That's hope this shows up on the camera here. Okay. And we'll see how much force it has. If that shows up. I'm going to go ahead and it'll probably take quite a bit to pull it off. 2500 3000 yeah just pulling off at 3000 it uh, that's because of this extra magnet here and uh, even at a point where the off of there I'm trying to get it so it doesn't there okay that's still reading about 20 25 get that up there kind of hard to get around that one bend there. That's still that's uh, 2,000 right there. So about an inch, inch away, we're having about 2,000 there. And it went down to 3,000 again. Or uh, 2,500. Pull more. There's 3,000. A little bit over 3,000 even. So even at a distance, there's about that uh, half inch, like that spacer. And this one's showing about 2200 or so. So if you remember on the other uh, electromagnet that was commercially built, when it had that spacer in there, it wouldn't even budge that spring. So this is just extraordinary. You can see why I got so excited about uh, furthering its development, see what we can do. But uh, uh, that's, that's powerful. The more, theoretically, uh, if you had a stronger and stronger field, then you could uh, lift a, a ton. Uh, keeping this as a uh, fixed input, you can have the output stronger and stronger by increasing the permanent magnet. So it's, uh, I hope this is something that uh, people out there maybe kind of enjoy and maybe work with some. Okay, thank you for watching.